Good morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. It is such a great day in the Lord. It's uh, an honor for us that you would tune in and to watch the program. We, we enjoy what we do. It's, it's, a, it's a great work for the Lord. I, I'm thankful to God, first of all, that I have this opportunity to be able to, to share His Word with people that maybe you, you've never met, uh, maybe that I've never met. I hope that there are, are people out there today that, that watch this program and can get some good out of God's Word. That's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's all about God's Word and what we can do for somebody else. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like this. The Lord has blessed me uh, beyond all my imaginations to be able to even sit here and, and do this for you, and I'm thankful to God for that. And I, I hope that the Lord will use me to give you the same excitement that I have to want to go out and help somebody else, want to cause somebody to, to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and to want to live for the Lord. I mean, this world, this this country especially that we are living in, uh, it was it was founded upon Christian morals and Christian beliefs and, and beliefs and it's just seemed like it's just going the, the opposite direction as hard as it can go. And I was watching the uh, presidential debates the other day and and I heard one of the, the candidates there is, and he was talking about how that uh, America needs to get back to what it started with and that was the Christian beliefs that we were founded on. And I do believe this country was founded on Christian morals and Christian beliefs from this word of God. And uh, today I hope that if you're not living for the Lord and you're watching this program, that you will think about, like Paul said, consider and hear what we say. The Lord will give you understanding in all things. You may not understand it all. You may not be able to, to grasp a hold of it. I was talking to a gentleman just this week and about how that we want to get God's Word out to people. And, and, uh, and I told him, I said, everybody just don't see it yet. Everybody hasn't had hasn't tasted of that graciousness of God. But once you do get a taste of that, you, you just want more and more if you really love the Lord. And if you turn away from that, the Bible speaks about how dangerous that is. And we, we hope that no one would do that. But unfortunately, there are people that just won't accept it. They won't accept that God is God and that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior. But that doesn't stop us from wanting to preach His Word. There are those that have accepted the word and then let the devil come along and take it out of their heart. Uh, there's so many bad reasons out there that that people are are taking that into their life and living that way instead of living for Jesus Christ. Uh, that kind of brings me to my text today. I want to I want to talk to you a little bit. Of, uh, the message I want to bring to you is, is where are the nine? Um, and, and I'll get into that today and maybe tomorrow or next week uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit further. But I want to start out in, in, in Luke's writing. This is, a, this is the 14th chapter of Luke. Actually, I'm sorry, it's the, uh, the 11th chapter of Luke and the 11th verse. And I want to think about where we have been as a country. Uh, this, this country and where, what we have obtained and how just in the last 30 or 40 years how things have progress so fast in uh, the technology that we have and the lifestyle that we live and things like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's really rapidly growing. And if you get to thinking about all of that, God has allowed us to have these things. The, the blessedness that's in the land of America, I believe, is because of, of where we had had Jesus Christ in our eyes and we had that Christian morals. Well, as things get progressive and, and Satan sees how he can use different ways to get into people. Not only am I able to come and bring you this word, if you'll look at your TV and, and uh, watch what's on there, there, it's hardly anything fitting to watch anymore on the television. Everything there has profanity, uh, has bad language, uh, scenes you just don't want to watch. It's very seldom I ever even watch television much anymore. There's just so much bad out there. And what it, if, if I'm able to come to you by this means of TV, I know Satan sure can, and he's sure doing it. And as, as life is progressing 
for us, so is he. And he is trying his best to destroy what God has got us here for. But we're never going to let him. God's never going to let him. As He may do it to some people, but not to all. As we've been teaching about fighting the fight of faith, when the Lord comes back, he's going to find faith on the earth. Well, that's that's kindly brings me to this here in Luke, the 11th chapter, and the 11th verse uh, reading down. It says, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, I want to, I want to examine that for just a little bit. Uh, you know, Peter told us that if we would repent of our sins and be baptized, that God would give us the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, God has, has done that, and there are people that, have taken advantage of that and just feel like that everything's okay with them. They don't need God anymore. Once they have uh, accepted him as their savior and said that Jesus Christ is Lord, that's good enough. And then they just go on and live their life haphazardly. That's a dangerous, dangerous way to be. We don't want to live that way. God don't want you to live that way. He wants you to live for him, being obedient. You know, the Bible teaches us that we are, servants of what we obey. If we obey Satan, then we become the servant of Satan. If we obey God and we live according to his word, then we become servants of God and of Jesus Christ. Well, if you look at America and the way it is today, all the good things that we have out there and how God has blessed us uh, in comparison to a lot of countries, it's amazing how much better we have it here than other people do. But the problem with that is, is people have accepted that well, I've got this. I'm doing well. I don't need God. I don't need anything else. Well, that's that's a bad, bad way to be. I want to go to the 17th chapter of Luke, and I want to I want to show you something here. Uh, this is Luke 17, and I think we'll start about the 11th verse. 17th chapter of Luke and the 11th verse. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leprous, which stood afar off. Now, I want to stop right there, and I want to talk about this. Back in, in these days, this, this leprous, that, that leprosy that they had, they, they stood afar off because they were outcasts. People wouldn't have anything to do with them. They wouldn't come near them, uh, afraid of how that, that leprosy would, would get a hold of them. And these people were, were cast afar off. And they, they, when Jesus come by there, he saw them out there. He said in the 12th verse again, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leprous, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew, shew yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Um, these 10 men were God. Jesus had told them, of course, to, as, as he lived according to the laws of, the, of, of Moses that were there, he, he followed that. That's the reason he told them to go and show themselves to the priest. But when they was obedient to Jesus Christ, they were cleansed. They were made whole. Well, that's kind of the way it is here in America. A lot of people have accepted that Jesus is the Lord and they are receiving the benefits that the Lord has given here in America. But they've turned away from him. They are happy with the cleansing that they've got, but they're not willing to do what this next part talks about. In the 15th verse, it said in one of them, remember there was 10. If you read the, t the 12th or 13th verse, the 12th verse, it said there were 10 men that were lepers. There was, there was 10 of them. But once they got cleansed, only one done this. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. How many people today are giving God glory for what they have? I read it a while ago in the, in the 11th chapter. He said, if, if us being evil know how to give good, evil being fathers know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more shall our heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Today, Jesus can give you that, 
by the cleansing of your soul, by repenting and turning to Jesus Christ. But what does God expect from us when that happens? Do we just go and live our merry little way? Or do we come to God and glorify Him? Are you going to the house of the Lord? The Bible talked about uh, the things that we have heard and seen uh, and, and have handled of, our, of the word of life. How do we get that? It's not by being at the ball game when church is going on or, or being somewhere uh, doing all other kind of things when, they're ne when they need to be giving God glory and honor. It, that's what he's talking about here in this, 11th, or this 17th chapter. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was, he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, and Jesus answering said, were, the, were there not ten that were cleansed? Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? You see, all of those that got cleansed, Jesus recognized that the other nine was nowhere to be found. Why were they not giving God glory? Why were they not coming to the house of the Lord and honoring God with the substance that he's given them? Where is that today? Where is that? You, you go back to... Uh, 9-11 uh, in 2001, I believe it was. I, I can't remember the exact year, but the 9-11 that the, the Twin Towers came down. If you'll remember right after that, church doors were open. People were going in just off the street and pray, praying to God, asking for mercy, asking for help. Uh, they, they were turning to God, just, just walking right off the street, going in and praying. Where, where, are they, where is that at today? People are not like that. Once, once they feel safe that everything's okay, then they turn away from the Lord. That's really when it's most dangerous because what can happen to you in a natural state is nothing compared to what God can do for, uh, to you out of a spiritual state. If we're worried about what man can do, he told us not to fear man, but to fear God who can destroy both soul and body and cast it into hell. Today, we need to focus more on giving our heart and life to Jesus Christ, asking the Lord, Lord, when I get up in the morning, what can I do today for you? What can I do to give you glory and honor? Let your light so shine that men may see your good deeds and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Where are the nine today? Where are they at? Are they going and giving God glory? Or they, do they come out to the house of the Lord and honor him and worship him? Like this man done in the 16th verse, it said he fell down on his face and, he, and, and, uh, and gave him thanks. He said he turned and cried in the 15th verse with a loud voice and glorified God. Today, that's what we need to do is give God glory and honor. Don't be one of the nine that don't do that. Uh, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I want to, right quick, before I run out of time, I want to tell you in two weeks we are going to have Family and Friends Day. I would love for you to come down and be my friend um, and a representative there for me. Uh, and if you're coming for somebody else, that's quite all right, too. But just come down and, and be with us down at the church. We, we are at 2211 South Dixie Highway here in Dalton, and we would love to have you. May God bless you is my prayer. Consider what we are saying. If God has given you anything, give him glory and honor, and thanks for the deliverance that he has given you. May God bless you.